In a recent live stream, I was demonstrating how hard it is to get the covers off some of these lamps and how they tend to distort, and then since I'd crushed it already, I crushed it a bit more and uh, made it an unusual shape. It still works, it's just an unusual shape. Um, subsequently, I hacked this to turn it from, what was it before? It was a 9 watt. I hacked it to turn it into a 3.7 watt lamp, which means it's more of a decorative light now. But also, uh, it's going to last a lot longer because it's not being grilled. And seriously, these lamps all have one thing in common. They're all from different manufacturers. They are pushing the LEDs to the limit. These lamps are designed to fail, and you can hack them. That's part of this video. However, when I use the lamp later on, uh, in another video, uh, people were interested in the fact it was shaped like that. So I thought, well, I'll make a video showing not just how to crush the covers of these lamps, but uh, how to actually hack them and modify them, because a lot of these lamps are using a common circuit now. They're using linear current regulators inside, and they're very easy to modify to actually change them to lower power lamps. So let's uh, start by taking a look at some of these lamps and noting how they all have very similar cases. So here's a Philips lamp. Here is an Asda lamp, Asda being the British branch of Walmart. Here is a status lamp that's sold by the local co-op and ShopRite. Uh, the co-op sells them for £8 each. ShopRite sells them at £5 for four. Bit of a price difference there. Uh, then we've got this one here, which is a Hyundai. And then we've got a couple of slightly different longer bases. One that says Maxim and one that says Gem Imports. And I think the Gem Import one's is brand branded Holt and was available one below. Let's take a look at, say, the status since it's a known variable. Now, if you want to try this crushing of the covers, it's really important that I think I'd recommend wearing gloves and being double sure that these are not glass because that's not going to end well. But if you apply very little bit of pressure, you can feel the thing actually giving. If that's going to happen, then you can crush them. And this is where having strong hands has its advantages. Oh, that's going to make a loud pop in the microphone. But uh, if you've got uh, hands like vices, you can just crush these covers in like this and make them into stylish iceberg lamps. That other side has popped out. Now let's see if I can get the top in as well. Uh, there we go. Stylish lamps that probably will actually reform their shape loud clicking popping noises. But anyway, you can form them like this. And the reason I kind of found this out is because I was trying to get the covers off and they have mastered gluing these on big time. I mean, it's just, if you take a look at it, they've put a sort of silicone -y stuff around here, but it really grips onto this plastic it, to the point that it leaves residue on the plastic when it finally comes off. But let's give it a go. It's off. And now I'm going to take a close up look at this. I'm going to take a picture of it so you can actually see it up close. Then I'll show you which components to actually, well, which component just to cut out. You don't need a soldering iron or anything. Which component to cut out to actually modify this? But before I do that, where's the Philips one? So the Philips one, is it also crushable? Yes, it's crushable. Mm -hmm. So you can pattern the Philips ones as well. As I say, if you're doing this yourself, wear gloves and make sure they're not glass. Let's see if I can get this one off. This one comes off. Oh, very similar. Um, different driver. There's a sense resistor, some resistors in series, yep, all very similar. Let's do one more. Uh, the Hyundai. Okay. Yep, this one is crushable. I'm sorry for the noise because uh, that will be sounding terrible for people with headphones. I shall try and remove those spikes later on. But yeah, this one's crushable, if you want to crush it. And can it be levered off? Yes, this one is different. This one has the separate power supply and then the current regulation with its sense resistors on top. But anyway, back to the original plan. I'm just going to take a picture of this, then I'll show you the, the components that are used to adjust it, and uh, then we can actually make the modification, and we'll see what the power changes to when we make that modification. So one moment, please. There may have been lamp Mageddon while the camera is off, but uh, some reverse engineering has been done and some experimentation is about to be done. Very similar. These uh, are all using push-in connectors, and the reason for that is for reliability from the capacitor perspective, the electrolytic capacitor. Let me just give you a quick guide around this circuit board. 
The supply comes in here and it goes straight to a bridge rectifier. The supply is actually going via a resistor on the back of the circuit board. In this case, it was a 30 ohm resistor, which is quite high. It goes to the bridge rectifier and then it goes over to this connector here, which is a capacitor just stuffed in the back. Let me show you that. Here's the supply coming on via the 30 ohm resistor. There is the electrolytic capacitor stuffed into those terminals. The reason for that is just to keep it off the board, try and keep it from getting too hot. That then powers uh, the current regulator circuitry. There is also a unusually high in this instance, a 1.5 meg ohm resistor across the capacitor. That does two things. It means you turn it off, the lights are going to go out decisively. If you don't have that uh, resistor there, the lights will gradually just fade down intensity slowly. It also means that if you have a slight current leakage through switch wiring, it will reduce the risk of this lamp just glowing at a low level, even when it's turned off. LEDs are so sensitive, they do that. So the actual current regulation involves all these LEDs being in series, and it's not just one chip in each. It's several chips to make up a voltage of, you know, 200 volts or over in the case of the UK. In the case of uh, this, uh, the voltage across this capacitor is going to rise to 330 volts, so it wouldn't surprise me if the combined voltage of all these is somewhere in the 300 volt region. But this then little component here then drops the difference and it dynamically adjusts almost like a resistor that's just dynamically adjusting and it uh, senses the current using these two parallel resistors here. They could just use one resistor, but they use two in parallel, possibly to share the load, but also to uh, let them fine tune a value because by connecting two resistors in parallel of different values, you can get a very accurate value adjustment. So let me show you a quick doodle of this and then we shall experiment. I'll zoom down further. Incoming supply goes through this 30 ohm resistor that serves to reduce the inrush current and also um, acts as a fuse. It's a metal film resistor and uh, they just tend to blow clear uh, when there's a short circuit. Uh, this uh, also messes up the R1, R2 reading, as I've mentioned in the past. We've got the bridge rectifier here, uh, which converts that to DC. It goes to the capacitor, 6.8 meg fired, 400 volt. It smooths it. There's that little load resistor that is for discharging the capacitor decisively when you unplug it so the lights don't fade out, but also to make sure they don't have a residual glow just through capacitive coupling in the switch wiring, particularly in two-way switching. After that, this... Let's call it 330 volts, 330 volts, uh, zero volts reference the circuitry. Um, it goes to the string of LEDs. I've just abbreviated it to five LEDs, but it's a lot more than that. And each one contains lots of LEDs. So best part of about 300 volts worth of LEDs or so. There's the regulator circuit, which has those two resistors in parallel on the sensing pin. It's also got a common uh, to the negative rail just for powering its own electronic circuitry. And... Uh, that this is just a very simple current regulator inside, but it's got the one advantage over the two transistor version in that it's got thermal sensing as well. If it detects the circuit board getting too hot, it will then start throttling the current down uh, lower until it reaches an equilibrium of temperature, at which point LEDs are being thoroughly baked. The two resistors in this one are 56 ohm and 43 ohms, which when you combine parallel resistors like that, this it comes out to 24.32 ohms. The chip is an SM2082EAS, little 8-pin package. Let's do an experiment. Let's zoom back out, let's bring the hoppy in. Things worthy of note, the uh, Philips did have a slight twist. The Philips has the much bigger, it's still an SM2082, but it's an SM2082G. It's got the same arrangement, it's got the supply coming on via a 20 ohm resistor. It goes through the bridge rectifier, it has the capacitor, good improvement. It's using two 510k resistors in series as a discharge resistor, which is better for the voltage rating of them. Uh, that then goes to the current regulator with its two sense resistors in parallel. But the other oddity, it's got packer resistors in series. In place of effectively one of the LEDs, it's got 3000 ohm resistors, 30 and two, three zero and two zeros, and it's got one, two, three, four, five in parallel, basically creating a high power 600 ohm resistor in series with that. That's possibly just to reduce current spikes in the circuitry, I'm guessing. It's an interesting twist. 
Philips always has interesting twists in their lamps. Not a sponsor. Let's brighten this image up a little. Probably too much, but that's all right. I shall bring in the hoppy. Tell you what, let's uh, let's select a new focus position. Let's bring in my little my little focus aid. Pow! There's the new focus. That saves uh, having to swear at the the phone. When it's refusing to focus, you give it something nice to focus on. Here is the hoppy. I'll just wipe the dust off before I bring it in. And here is a fetching pink lamp holder. Here is the lamp that is the subject of our modification. So I shall screw this in and we'll see what it says. Actually, I shouldn't have adjusted the exposure because uh, that means the hoppy is going to flicker more. It says... Well, for was this not supposed to be 9 watt? 9 watt? It says it's 8 watt. Okay. So, let's say 8.1 watt. Hold on, I'll bring in my notepad. 8.1 watt. 8. Oh, 8.1 watt. Okay. Let's see if we can work out what modification we can make here. So, we've got the two little resistors on there. We've got the 56 ohm and the 43 ohm, giving 24.32. So if I get this right, I'll bring in the kink calculator and we'll have a wee go at calculating this. So it's 8.1 watts, 8.1 times 24.32, just bear with me here, equals 196. So... I could say, let's say 197, 197 divided by 56 ohms would give 3.5 watts. 3.5 watts. Or, what was that? Uh, let's hold on, times 56 ohms. Uh, so 197, just bear with me again, divided by uh, 43 ohms would give... 4.6 watts. So I've got a choice. By cutting one of those resistors out, I can take it from 8.1 watts down to either 3.5 watts or 4.6 watts. And I'm inclined to say that for the l good longevity and maximum efficiency, the temptation is to remove the uh, 43 ohm resistor, the lower value resistor, which is going to result in higher current and just leave the 56 ohm. So let's see what that is. So I want to take out the 43 ohm resistor, which is, hold on, let me point it. It's this resistor here. Hold on, I'm going to zoom down for this. This is kind of, this is kind of good. Let's take that out of the way. So I want to remove this resistor here. There's a couple of ways we could do this. We could plug it into uh, a lamp holder and let it heat up, noting that this is all live, it means voltage. Um, and then we could use a soldering iron to get that off, or... Keep in mind that uh, these are just little ceramic uh, blocks with the carbon film on top. So as long as you can just break it, like nip it out like this and break that carbon off, then that stops being a resistor. And this should now have that new reading of 3.5 watts. Do you think it's going to work? Let's uh, zoom back out a little bit. Let's bring the hop in. Let's screw this back in and see if it's dropped closer to 3.5 watts. Three point seven watts. That's not bad. So it's gone from at eight watts down to less than half. So that is going to be more efficient. It's going to actually. It's not going to be putting out half the light. It's going to be putting out a bit more than that. It is incidentally. It's it's warm white. It's looking lurid yellow here just because of the color balance of the lights I'm using here. Uh, but this is going to be putting out a good amount of light. But more importantly, it's going to be running cool. Keep in mind the front of this is means voltage. At this point you could then stick the cover back on, whichever one I took on. Uh, or uh, if you live on your own, there's nobody else about, you could put it into certain light fittings on its own, just with the open front, uh, which looks great in chandeliers, by the way, just if it's got all the crystals hanging down, it actually casts lots of images off the LEDs. But uh, keep in mind it is, it does pose an electrical shock hazard off the front of this. Uh, but that's it. Is there anything else worth looking at here? There was 
Oh, that's probably better for another video. That's quite a complex subject. There was one other light fitting uh, I looked at that had not many LEDs like this one. This is just so stingy. But it was a 5 watt or 6 watt light and it used a capacitive dropper and it had a really odd arrangement of LEDs that depending which of the LED positions you populated it, it would put X number in series. So you could have just 5 LEDs or you could have 10 LEDs just depending on which places you populate. It was quite a clever circuit board. But these are all very similar. It seems to have evolved to a standard. It's the simple... Uh, it's the simplest way to drive the LEDs is this sort of linear current regulation. There's no capacitor, there's no switch modes power supply. Um, and it just effectively acts as a, as a heat dissipation, heat dissipating the resistor. This component gets hot to limit the current through the LEDs in normal operation uh, with that self-regulating feature. But as I say with these, that they are pushing the LEDs... I get the feeling that they're tuning it up. I know this sounds conspiracy and all that, but I get the feeling they're tuning it up to the point that the LEDs will last for their stated lifespan. Well, not for their stated lifespan. They'll last about a year, if that, and then they'll fail. They are pushing them right to the edge, and there's absolutely no need to do that. Um, I'm not sure why they're... Well, money. Yeah, that's why they're doing it. But that's them. So if you have a go at crushing these uh, lamp covers, just remember, I would recommend wearing gloves. Just for your own safety, just in case the plastic splits or, or in case you grab a plastic coated glass one that feels like plastic but isn't. But there is that slight give if you just squeeze them gently. Uh, there is that slight give in them, so just uh, be careful if you try that. You can get some quite crushed up shapes and once you've lowered the power down it can then effectively be a decorative lamp. So interesting things. But that is about it. Crushing lamps and hacking them. It's a pleasant evening's entertainment.